people welcome to my channel marina here and i am excited to come back <laughs> in another video this girl vanished last week for reasons that were beyond my immediate control if you have been here a while you know it's out of character for me to just disappear and not tell you people why but yeah it, the circumstances were outside my control and i just needed to take that step back how are you guys doing did you people miss me did you even notice i didn't post last week did you notice anyway <laughs> i'm happy to be back and um yeah i just thought to come give you guys some updates where i've been how things have been and did you guys like my plants my fake plants back there i remember one of my videos somebody suggested that i could put a plant there and i thought fantastic idea i'll put the plant now please if you're that person come and see do you like it <laughs> i like it it's nice if you're new here welcome my videos are never this chaotic um i make videos from saskatoon in saskatchewan and I'm basically here just to make settling into life in Canada seamless for newcomers and for entering professionals. So if that's the kind of content you're looking for or something that you think might interest you, do well to hit the subscribe button and join us. To my returning subscribers, welcome. Family members, welcome. You guys, what have I been up to? <laughs> Believe it or not, this crazy girl, this one that you people are looking at, I'm back to studying, guys. I've enrolled myself for something else. I'm reading book again. I'm studying again. I put tired because even me at this point, I'm questioning myself. I'm like, what exactly is the real problem? Gong gong. What exactly is happening? What's really going on? <laughs> some people almost wanted to bet that, oh, I'm giving you a couple of months and you will find something else to study again. Well, you're not wrong. I'm back to studying. This time, I'm finally confronting something that I've been running away with from for years and some of you who are ogs on this channel you have mentioned it before to say marina you should consider this you should consider becoming a counselor you should consider becoming like a family life coach i've been running away from those things because of fear some of it was because of timing some of them are like who's even going to listen to me so someone now come to me come ask me questions as a family life what you know i've been running away from that and then finally I'm, I'm facing that. I'm finally facing that. So I am currently enrolled in a family systems engineering certification program. That's what I'm studying for. Um, it's been an intense program already. It's been a couple. I've been in there for about two weeks already. And you guys, it has been like a mind shift experience for me. Just like a complete excavation. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a good experience, quite frankly. Uh, I feel like the final push that I needed was um, just coming to terms with the fact that, see, no matter how much you run away from this, if you like run for 10 years, 10 years is going to pass. What 10 years meets you doing is now what is going to be up to you. So whether you do it now or you do it in five years, this is not something you're going to be able to run away from. But I would say the final push was when um, Pastor Kingsley and Pastor Mildred came to Saskatoon. Uh, for those of you who attended the event in person, you guys know that Pastor Kingsley literally launched me after that event. Like he literally told everybody that Marina is going to be a coach. You guys look out for her. And I'm like, okay, maybe this is the final voice <laughs> that will finally get me to just take, a, take, take the bull by the horn and do that. And that's kind of why I signed up and I'm in training right now to take that course. Um, and that's what I wanted to come talk to you guys about. Some of the things that I'm learning so far that just got me thinking and I'm like, are we even ready for this? Like, are we even ready for, for what is to come? Are we positioning ourselves well? Like, if you know me on this channel, you know that most of the things I talk about is basically just having people who move from one country to another. Like, how can you make the best decisions? How can you put yourself in the best position so that you can thrive? Like, that's what my main focus is. And a lot of that, I do it around career and family. And that's what this has done for me. Like the, the program so far has already touched on these areas. Not quite career, but there are a lot of things that I'm learning that I find that can be transferable from career to family and even from family to career. And one of them, yesterday we had one of the sessions and one of the questions that we were asked was, what do you think like life will look like 50, 60, 70, 80 years from today? Like what do you think the world will look like in 20 90 for instance like we were all supposed to just pick a different year and talk and talk about what we find so we use like a google search for me i picked 2045 and the emphasis was that um 
AI was going to literally have taken over a lot of things in like medicine, in like business, in like the tech world. There was going to be a lot of reliance on artificial intelligence to do things. Um, there was also mention of like what the what the climate will look like. There will be increased number of natural disasters because of changes to climate and things like that. Um, some some links provided information to say that there would have been a lot of significant changes in medicine. People would be able to reverse their age. Another person, I think a person picked 2075 or so, and they talked about at that time there will be artificial uterus that can carry a child to full term. Like the family system will look different. Like the family unit might look different from what it looks like right now. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> if that is anything to go by. What will our families look like at that time? And I was very quick not to say they're just talking, it's not going to happen. Because the truth of the matter is that if somebody had told my father, like if my father were alive, he would have been 91 years old now. If somebody had told him when he was age 30 that some of the things that were happening in the world when he was 70 were going to happen, I'm not sure he would have believed, let alone now. Like this is me assuming that he was still alive. Like some of you still have parents who are 90 and they are alive. If somebody had told them when they were 40 that some of the things that they are seeing now was going to happen, I'm very sure they would have sworn that it's a lie. The world is going to end before that will happen. But we're seeing it happen before our eyes. So now I'm looking into the future to say in another 40, 50 years, what is it going to be like? Chances are those things will happen. It will happen. There's no amount of God forbid, God forbid that will stop it. Those things will happen. And then I'm wondering like, what will the family unit look like 50 years from now? Are we building solid enough foundations right now such that no matter what happens 50 years from now, we're handing down values that can pass those tests? Are we handing down values that 50 years from now, those values will still be relevant? Are we all holding on to cultures and beliefs and things like that, that will not survive the next 10 years? That's kind of what's happening. A lot of the traditions and the beliefs and some of the things that we hold on to that have been passed down to us from generation to generation, if you give it another 10 years, can those things stand? When the next generation of immigrants are born in all of these countries that we now live in, what percentage of the values and the cultures and the beliefs that we have, what percentage of those cultures are our children going to hand down? And I'm using our children because we are trying to hand down these beliefs and values to our children. How solid is what we are handing down such that we have confidence that those things can be handed down to the next generation? I don't know if this is making sense the way I'm saying it, but the thoughts I be scattered in my head. This was what happened in class yesterday. Like this is what we talked about to say, what exactly is the future going to look like? In what way am I positioning myself? Now, the way I related that to career is in the career path that I'm in right now, if we give it another 20 years, say, how old am I? I'm not 40 yet. So if I'm going to, let's say I don't leave paid employment, right? If I'm going to work for another 20, 25 years, the careers that the career that I'm in, the skills that I have, the competencies that I have, if it can be replaced by AI in another 10 years, what does that then do for my career in 10 years? Do I become obsolete, become irrelevant in the workplace because I've been replaced by AI? Or am I constantly developing skills and competencies that cannot be replaced by AI or that will not easily be replaced by AI so that I'm always going to have some kind of relevance in the workplace? Like guys, my head has been racing since yesterday. When I think about all of these things, I'm like, Seriously though, like all of these things that I'm spending so much time chasing today, can those things be easily wiped away by AI from work or outside of work? Like am I holding on to things that can very easily become obsolete because they will not stand the test of time when all of these changes that are projected begin to happen? Like what does that do for us? What does that do for the family unit? When I was a child, I was told that the family is father, mother, and children. These days, that looks different. What is, what is the future going to look like for, for the traditional families that we know? Is that still going to be the norm? Those questions are worth asking. And what I want everybody to think about from this is, what are you doing today? What are you holding on to today that 10, 15 years from now, those things will become irrelevant? 
Are you holding on to beliefs that are already obsolete? Are you holding on to cultures and traditions that, that can only work in one very tiny demographic when it comes to like the grand scheme of things? Is that what you're holding on to? Or are you hand, handing down values such that if my son woke up tomorrow and said, Mom, I got a scholarship, I'm going to university in Japan, the values that he has will still be able to hold. Whether I was born in Nigeria, raised in Canada, now going to school in Japan, those values will be able to hold. Will it hold? Those are the questions I'm asking myself. When we say it's not our culture, when we say, oh no, this is what our culture is, what, what exactly is that? What exactly formed the things that we have called culture? On what basis were those cultures formed? What is the track record of this culture? What is the report card? This culture that we have held on to for years. If we want to go back and really analyze it, what is the report card of that our culture? Is that culture really holding? Are we holding on to things that is just peer pressure from dead people? Peer pressure from the ancestors and say that's our culture. If we really sit down and begin to question some of these things that we have held, held on to, these beliefs that we have held on to, if you question it, can you even trace it back and say, oh, this is where this started from? M more than half the time in class yesterday, I was looking like a zombie because all the questions they say we should ask, <laughs> like all the things that you have always known, all the cultures and the beliefs that you have held on to, where did this stem from? I could not answer a lot of the questions. I couldn't. I just realized that I've been running with things that I have never really questioned. And, and the reason why I didn't question some of these things is not because I was afraid to question. It was because it was not the norm to question things. At some point in my young adult life, I realized that I had opinions that were a bit different from the norm, right? And I got afraid because I thought something was wrong with me, that I was looking at things differently. So I started to shrink. I started to hide and not talk and try to conform with what was around me. And that decision led to a lot of poor choices. Like I'm going to own that. I've made poor choices in my life from the fear of, I don't know how to stand out. I don't know what I'm going to look like standing out. If everybody is saying something is five, why is my own case always different? I thought something was wrong with me. I'm back now. I feel like I've come full circle to that point now where it's like, there was actually nothing wrong with you. You just did not have the right place or the right support or the right environment to question those things without feeling like something was wrong, right? Guys, I feel like this video is just all over the place, but I just thought I'll come share my thoughts on what has been happening with me and something to get everybody thinking as well. So for those of you who are in families, who have children, and you're handing down cultures and beliefs, maybe we want to pause and just say, what exactly are we handing down? What are we trying to do with this thing that we're handing down? Is it culture? Is it belief? Or are there things that will become obsolete in 10 years? Are these things going to be able to stand the test of time, regardless of where our children go? Because I'm going to be deluding myself if I say I'm very sure that I live in Saskatoon, my children are going to go to U of S and they will, they will walk in Saskatchewan. I will be deluding myself if I say that's what's going to happen because I have no control over where they go. Will those values that I handed down or started to hand it down... Wait, wait. <laughs> Will those values that I started to hand down in Nigeria and continue to enforce in Canada, will it hold ground in South Korea? Will it hold in Japan? Will it hold in China? Will it hold in Singapore? Will it hold anywhere other than where I am? If that culture can only hold when I'm there trying to enforce it, then something just doesn't sit right with it. That's what I've been thinking about. And I hope that somebody can take that, like for your career, um, the, the skills and the competencies that you have today or the career path that you're in today, is it a career path that will be relevant in 10 years? If the answer is no, then the best time to start to think of alternatives is today. It's, it's okay for you to pivot. The fact that you have done something for 20 years does not mean you cannot learn something new. If pivoting into something new is how you re remain relevant, then that's definitely consideration for some people to start to think about. Same thing with your family, same thing with your marriage. The things that you're holding on to, to say this is what our family is built on. Is it values that can stand 20, 30 years from now? It's easy to say this will not concern me, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. But the truth is, that's the reality of the world that we live in. If the world has not ended then, if Jesus has not come back before then, those things are going to happen. So the earlier we start to face the realities of what is in front of us and begin to make plans to adjust to those realities or the possibility of those realities, the better for everybody. That's where my head has been. I, I still have about 10 weeks to go in this program. So I'm going to come and be sharing nuggets with you guys from time to time, what I'm learning, the things that I think are going to be relevant to all of you. But everybody just needs to get thinking. Like, 
What does the future look like for your career, for your family, for life in general? Are you positioned appropriately? Are you positioned in such a way that you will be relevant regardless of what happens around us? What will be the fate of our children? I've thought about that so many times and I'm like, Jesus, can you just come back already? Let everybody just rest. <laughs> but while we're here, we have to start to make plans to think about those things so that what is supposed to be a blessing will be a blessing and not become a who sent me or had I know, you know? Anyway, that's what I wanted to come share with you guys today. Before I go today, I just wanted to take a moment to share a huge shout out to my sister, my immediate younger sister. Um, I shared with you guys that a couple of months ago, my sister um, lost her husband. Today is her birthday. She is 35 today. Um, it might be a difficult day today because, I mean, her life looks very different now. Looks, Things are just very different with her right now and... Navigating this new phase of life has not been very easy. Today's her birthday. So if you have a moment, please leave a birthday prayer, a birthday wish, a good wish, a good thought for my sister in the comment section. Um, happy birthday, sis. You know, you know, I don't have to say it here. Well, I've had this conversation many times, but I love you so much and I want you to know that I'm here. Some days I wish I can take this pain away from you and just so that everything will be fine, but everything is going to be fine. You're going to be okay. You're not alone. You have a huge army of people who, who you can lean on. So please lean on us. Press us. We're here. Okay. Happy birthday, sis. Please share a birthday wish with my sister in the comment section. I would appreciate that. And then for everybody else. Marina is in training. When I finish this certification, you are going to be tired of me. Because see, eh, our families will succeed. We will succeed. That it's my mission. We're going to restore sanity to the world, one family at a time. That's why I'm here. If you have any questions about this, like, are you thinking the way I'm thinking? Am I, am I the only crazy one here as usual? I don't mind. I'm, I'm okay. I'm finally okay. We've been the only one who's crazy. I no longer feel the need to conform. So I will ask those questions. If you are thinking like that, leave that in the comment section as well. Have you thought about this? Like, are you holding on to things that will not be relevant in 10 years? How can we help each other? If you want to share, you're more than welcome to leave a comment in the comment section. And I'll be there just to banter and exchange some ideas, okay? Well, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Please subscribe. Oh, this is a great time to subscribe because the information that I'm getting is like mind excavation for me. And as I'm learning, I'm going to be coming here to share with you guys. So there's a lot to come, okay? Subscribe. This is a good time. You don't want to miss anything. Well, until I come your way in the next video, see your girl as always, Marina, saying thank you and have an awesome day. Bye, guys. <laughs> Oh,